We are two thirds of the way through the Africa Cup of Nations qualifying campaign. And while the likes of Riyad Mahrez and Sadio Mane have confirmed qualification with Algeria and Senegal respectively, not everyone had a very good international break with the likes of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Mohamed Salah having a weekend to forget. Colin, let's talk about the positive stories first. Mahrez, Mane, even Hakim Ziyech with Morocco were all really influential during this international break, weren't they? Oh, yeah, certainly. I mean, Ziyech, two goals, one assist in the last game, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Fine form, same form he's been carrying from Chelsea, took it to Morocco and is just taking them, you know, within, should I say, shouting distance of um, qualification for the African nations. In fact, if you look at it, even though they've not qualified mathematically, you could say that there's no way they don't qualify now. And, um, but... You know, leaving Morocco and going to um, Senegal, um, you, you look at um, Sadio Mane, two goals in two games, even though he missed, he missed an open net. <laughs> but yeah, Senegal have gone four games um, straight with, with, without um, losing. In fact, four, four wins, actually. Four straight wins in this qualification series, 12 points, and they're through. And, you know, it's, it's just amazing how they've become such a fantastic winning machine. And Algeria, they've gone 22 games unbeaten so far. Far and away, African champions, Africa's best team. Yeah, Algeria certainly have uh, records within their grasp with that uh, undefeated streak. But I want to talk about Morocco a little bit, because even though Morocco did beat the Central African Republic 6-1 on, on aggregate over those two matches, if you want, um, they weren't entirely convincing. Uh, Ashraf Hakimi struggled. He was... Uh, he was on the receiving end of some quite physical defending. Um, but how important is it for Morocco to have a match winner, a bona fide match winner like Ziyech, who can transfer that Premier League form to the African environment and, as we saw, uh, settle games almost single-handedly? Well, look, you can talk about, you know, how unimpressive they've been all you want, but the bottom line is they came away with six points from two games. You know, when you compare that to Nigeria, who gave, who coughed up a 4 nil lead at home, to Sierra Leone, then you've just got to give credit. At some point, you know, as a football team, um, if you want to be champions or if you want to be a big team, you've got to eke out wins in very difficult uh, conditions. And that's exactly what Morocco have done, what the Super Eagles did not do. I think we should maybe keep this a Nigeria-free zone for now, to be honest, Colin, or we'll both end up in a, in a very bad place. Um, Algeria, obviously, they are the reigning African champions. They've got this undefeated streak. I was wary that maybe their team was already a little bit on the old side when they won the AFCON and that the next tournament could be uh, a little bit of a step too far for some of this team. But how important is the arrival of fresh blood, such as Saeed Ben Rama, uh, into this side as they approach this next uh, cycle of tournaments? Yeah, I, I think it, it's great for them because that means they've got... Um, the combination of youth and experience. I mean, think about it. This team was almost, you, 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 I mean, at some point you almost thought Yassim Brahimi um, was almost indispensable to this team. But all of a sudden, um, you know, Belmadi came in, took him out, a, a few others, and the likes of Benatar come in. And, you know, the team is looking almost, you know, like a different beast entirely. And they've gone 22 games without, without a loss. So uh, uh, you, you've got to think that, you know, it's a very well-oiled machine. I was a bit concerned about them, though, especially watching that game against um, Zimbabwe. They, they, they looked really vulnerable at the back uh, at some point, and you've got to think that maybe that's an area of concern for Belmadi. If Zimbabwe had a few more, should I say, clinical finishers, you could have been talking about maybe 3-2, 4-2 win for Zimbabwe. I was certainly expecting goals in that doubleheader between Algeria and Zimbabwe, but I must admit I was surprised when Algeria took that two-goal lead and then conspired to throw it away and only draw 2-2. Um, however, when it comes to teams obviously throwing away big leads during this international break, there's only one team we can really uh, talk about there. Um, however, it wasn't all How did all I just know you were going to go there? How did I just know you were going to go there? I was talking about uh, Gambia and Gabon. I don't know what you mean. Let's talk about some of the African players who didn't enjoy, some of those superstars who didn't enjoy such a fantastic weekend, uh, namely Mohamed Salah, who has now contracted coronavirus after attending his brother's wedding, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who spent uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, live streaming from uh, Banjul International Airport in Gambia. Uh, if you're Jurgen Klopp or if you're Mikel Arteta, which of these two is uh, worrying you more? Uh, well, you've got to think that, um, one, Mohamed Salah is the bigger problem in terms of the quality of, uh, of play he brings to Liverpool and how, especially when you consider 
who is already in Liverpool's um, treatment room. Uh, they've got almost half their squad, you know, in the injury room. And now they have been joined by arguably their best player, Mohamed Salah, on the sidelines. But you've got to also say that Ateta also have a bit of fun himself because apart from the fact that Obama Young might come back with a bit of aches and pains from, you know, sleeping at, sleeping at the airport, Mohamed El Neni also tested positive for coronavirus. So now he has to quarantine as well. And that's a problem for, 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 for him because that's two of his top players. You know, well, El Neni might not be quite a top player, but hey, these are two integral players so far this season. And you've got to look at it and think that Ateta will be sort of pulling his hair out and thinking what on earth is going on. You know, so but but that thing at the airport, I think, was really uh, it was absurd, and in some ways, maybe we need to blame CAF for probably not communicating properly because Nigeria also had the same issue when they got to Sierra Leone. You know, the CAF rule says that players' teams must be tested on arrival at the airport before they get in, and some of the players or some of the teams probably didn't quite understand that, and um, Gabon, especially according to the guys in Gambia, resisted the testing, and even when they got to the hotel. They refused to be tested, saying that they had been tested already and they brought the certificates to them. So it's all a bit of a shambolic um, communication disaster. For me, that's that's the Gabon Football Federation who have to take the blame there. I mean, you had the, the head coach of Gabon, Patrice Nervous, suggesting that this was tactics on the part of Gambia to keep them locked up in the hotel, whereas you had the, the sports minister of Gabon himself who was claiming that it was a strategy on the part of Gambia, that it was underhanded tactics uh, aimed to to make the players weak, aimed to destabilize the players, and actually it was Gambia, it was Gabon, excuse me, who were in the wrong, who were refusing to test mm-hmm. upon arrival. But I certainly think for Abamyang, particularly who's not in a great place right now, it, it's really dire preparation for him to be spending a night sleeping on the floor in in the uh, the departure hall in, in Bangui International, and then. Um, obviously losing the match and now having to head back to uh, to Arsenal. Um, just one more final word on, on Salah. Um, Mido has been very critical of him, claiming that it was negligent of Salah to go to that wedding, uh, claiming that the EFA should be stronger with the star players and uh, should have stood up against him. Uh, what's your take on that? I, I absolutely agree. Look, these are very strange times we live in, you know. Look, in Nigeria, we've had in the past where players will report for international duty and rather than go straight to camp, they'd go to see their families and, you know, go to different events before they come to camp. Now, maybe in the past, as wrong as that was, it could have been tolerated. Now, under the circumstances where you're trying to keep, you know, as closely quarantined personally as possible, a player should not be so... Um, I'm trying not to use the word stupid, but that was, it was stupid. Salah was stupid, you know, to have to come in Rather than going straight to camp where you have sort of like a bubble atmosphere, you're going off to a wedding, you know, to interact with people that you don't know where they've been, you know. So I, I think it was really silly of Salah to do that. And I think that in future, um, federations need to take proper um, measures to deal with that. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.